Welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Hey, Thanksgiving is coming up soon. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful, perfectly cooked turkey right on your charcoal kettle grill. Now, we use the Weber kettle grill, tried and true favorite, but there's a lot of good ones out there, and you could do it on any of those. So please, please don't let any of this happen to your Thanksgiving turkey. I know, those are all tragedies, you know. Deep fried turkey, if done right, um, could be awesome. It really can. I've had some good ones. I've had some bad ones. And I just know too many people that have had that problem with the fire. Okay. Uh, some of these other bacon fells, I don't know how those happen. Um, but at any rate, if you follow this simple procedure, we're going to show you right here in this video, your turkey will come out perfect every time with none of those fails like you just seen. But what I made that brine, I took one cup of this kosher sea salt, mix that with, uh, that's one full gallon, not from concentrate apple juice. All right, so I just put some of this in here, shook it up real good to make sure the salt was in. So what we done was we put that turkey inside of a bag and put that marinade and that brine mixture in there and we tied it closed. And we put a whole bag of ice on top of that. We did that two days ago. Okay, it's important. Two days in this brine. So what we're gonna do now is just we're gonna take them out, dry them off. Oh, oh. Oh. All right guys, here's the Weber kettle grill setup. Uh, full chimney of charcoal, uh, half the chimney on both sides, half the chimney lit, these are unlit, okay? So there's the half a chimney that's just about lit. We're going to put uh, half of that on each side to get it going. I like to bring my temperature up slowly. It's a lot easier to bring it, to get it hotter than it is to cool it off. So uh, go a half, half uh, chimney unlit, half chimney lit. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and prepare some veg. We're going to put it in a pan, a roasting pan, just like this good old roasting pan right there. And we've got some broth, some nice chicken broth from Better Than Bouillon Base. And we're going to go ahead and make a bed for that turkey to lay on when it's in the grill. be just about enough to cover the bottom of the pan. It's going to vary depending on the size of your turkey and your fan. Our turkey is pretty small. So, be just fine. Just kind of toss those up and over here we got some, uh, if I can get this box open, we got some dry thyme. Thyme is awesome on turkey. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pull those twigs apart. Let's put a few in there. This started out as fresh time, but if you leave it in the refrigerator, in a package it comes in, it will dry in there very nicely. All right. Now, into that, got about four cups of chicken broth. And this is from Better Than Bouillon. It's been sitting here now. Let me stir a little bit. All right. And that's going to be the home for our turkey for about the next two hours over on the grill. 
So again, this, this pan here serves two purposes. A, it's gonna keep our, our breast meat from overcooking on our turkey, and B, it's gonna be a basis for a really kick-ass gravy we're gonna make afterwards. So the last thing to go into this concoction is our turkey neck, we kind of put him down the side. And then we want our giblets. Looks like uh, we didn't get much this time, we got a gizzard. So there's a gizzard in there. And you can also use these to help prop up your turkey if they need to, to, to get them to balance up in there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and prep our bird now. I got him mostly dried off. And I'm gonna do the same thing to his wings as I do with my uh, my chicken wings. I'm gonna go right into his armpit here, right at that joint. I'll make a little slice in the skin. Okay, you don't want the slice to be too big. <clears throat> then I'm gonna take my finger and go up under there and loosen that, that skin up where you can tuck that wing right up in there next to that breast meat, just like that. That has a lot of fat in that wing tip. We might have to take a little skewer and put right through here just to keep it in place. We'll do that. We're just going to season the outside with Seminole Swamp Seasoning. It's my favorite. I'll leave you a link right down in the description box where you can buy this direct from them. It's great on everything. Breast side down. More butter. All right, grill setting perfect, 300, right where we want it. We'll take our bird, we're gonna put him right down the middle, and right in the center, both of those piles. He said, and I did pin his, uh, his elbows back there with the skewer too. So what we need to do now, is we wanna introduce a little bit of smoke right at the beginning. So I got some, uh, Either some Jack Daniels whiskey barrel smoking chips. I haven't tried these yet, I just opened them up. Somebody gave this to me for a gift last year. So just on one side, it'll be fine. That'll start giving us a nice smoke. Let's get that lid back on so our heat doesn't creep up on us. It's the home for the next two hours. Get on my high heat gloves and I'm gonna try to flip them right here where he So I'm right in the side of the breast, thickest part, 165. That's perfect. Color looks awesome. So let's go ahead and get it off. And we'll start making our kick ass gravy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take him out of this baking pan. I got my high heat gloves on again. 
I'm going to try to be very, very gentle with him. Do not want to mess with that skin. I'm going to let any moisture that's in him kind of drain out. Bring him right over on our uh, other stainless steel pan. Because now we need to strain this to start our kick ass grate. So he's over here. We're going to go ahead and tint him loosely with some aluminum foil, shiny side. Just pour all those pan juices and pieces right in there. Now you see that you know it's well above where my bowl is. So I have another bowl right here standing by and I'm gonna lift this strainer. Let most of that go in there and we'll put it right over here. We're gonna that's going to catch the rest of the juices and it's going to allow them to cool down. And then we're going to pick that meat from that neck, which will go back into our kick ass. Cream. So, while all that separation process is going on, I'm moving all of my charcoals now to the center of the grill. We're going to need some heat over here for our gravy. We already got a nice hot grill, so we might as well just go ahead and bring what we got back into the middle. Cowboy lump and on we'll there. Go. That's going to catch really fast. And then we want to get some cast iron up on it. Okay, that did not take long for that to get up to heat. So what we're going to make first is a roux. And that's just going to be equal parts flour. A butter, three tablespoons of butter. Give them a second to melt there. All right, three tablespoons of flour. Go in there easy with it. We want it to where it's just flowing. Okay, so that uh, roux is nice and brown now. I actually took that off the fire for a little bit. I put in, we in here we got some acorn squash sitting around the perimeters there. And here's some of the, uh, the broth that we took out from under that turkey. We skimmed up the fat. Going to have to add this a little at a time. Keep on stirring. Bring it up to the boil. As it boils, it's going to thicken with that roux. So it's about time now to go get us a whisk so we can keep that nice and smooth. All right, sticking it up real nice, getting nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and take, that's the turkey neck meat and the gizzard that we uh, got with the turkey. Let's go ahead and whisk that in there. And I got more broth standing by. This needs to simmer a while. And that broth is going to concentrate down. So we don't want to season it yet until it gets close to the end because it's easy to get this, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of salt level we got in there yet, but you can get it too salty. All right, we're going to get ready to... Uh carve this guy first thing I want to do is pull out these skewers that we put in those wing tips and you know we put some down there in the elbows too Let's see if we can get to that one at least on this side there it goes beautifully tender so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the entire I'm gonna flay off that entire breast side I go right in there by you know right beside the breastbone cut down right to the ribs we'll follow those ribs down with our knife Get a little gentle pressure in there all right I'm going to come in here right beside it above that wing joint cut all the way through 
a lateral line all the way to the ribs. All right, I'm just going to peel that right. Ooh, wow, that's really hot still. So we're going to peel it, but we're going to get it there in the knife. Take that right off. I'm going to move that right over to our cutting board. Let's go ahead and give this a try. First, I'm going to try that turkey. Uh, we browned this for two days, apple juice. Mm. Moist, tender, just a slight bit smoky. Nothing like a smoked turkey, but you definitely do uh, taste that little hint of smoke. Let's try some ac acorn squash with the gravy. Wow, homemade bread and gravy. I'll tell you what, try this dish out for your Thanksgiving dinner. It's a little different than you know tr your uh, traditional Thanksgiving uh, put together but it's really elegant it's a very nice presentation and it's super damn delicious and that gravy really is kick-ass mm. so thanks for watching the backwoods gourmet as always you can subscribe right here for another great backwoods gourmet video it's gonna be right there and for a whole playlist cooking on that weber kettle grill gonna be right up there we'll see you next time